attendance report. Mr. Mersinger. Thank you, Mr. Jenkins. Uh, so as you can see, there are a few items on the superintendent's report and a motion is requested to approve them. And um, before I request that motion, uh, I do want to just make a statement to the board and for the benefit of the public. Uh, you know, we had uh, town hall meetings just yesterday with staff members and, uh, and other community members, parents, and, and anyone else who really wanted to participate. Um, we also had town hall meetings a couple weeks ago uh, based on the original plan, uh, but we, we decided it was important to have town hall committee meetings uh, at, at this stage as well because of, of what was happening. So, I mean, there, there's been a lengthy process to get to this point, and I just, I really want uh, to impress upon the board and upon everyone that uh, there's a timeline for this that, that I just want everyone to understand. Um, just one week ago, uh, on August 12th, so I mean, it feels like it was a month ago, but it was a week ago. Uh, on August 12th, that's when Governor Murphy uh, gave districts the flexibility to request a fully remote or virtual opening for students under certain conditions. Um, and then just the next day, uh, that's when the reopening committee met uh, to assess the need for a remote start. I asked for all the committee members to provide me with feedback about that topic. Um, I had already been considering it based on the checklist that was provided by the Department of Ed. Uh, Governor Murphy also exi uh, issued Executive Order um, 175. So um, the reopening committee evaluated the readiness uh, in light of the requirements, especially focusing on health and safety. And after careful analysis uh, and after receiving the feedback, the reopening committee and I uh, did focus on several standards that would remain unsatisfied if we were to open uh, under a hybrid plan as of September. Uh, so that to me uh, is a cause for concern, you know, and when I talked to the reopening committee members, uh, a number of them said, well, I, I believe we can start with hybrid, but, and then listed a handful of concerns. Well, everything that comes after the but is something we need to consider as something to address in the plan. So considering that, you know, considering the overall impact of COVID-19, uh, the feedback from the committee, the governor's announcement, the checklist, the executive order. Um, that's when I came to the conclusion that an all remote virtual plan would be the safest uh, and be the most effective way to start the 2021 school year. Uh, and, I, and it was a difficult decision. You know, I want everyone to understand that this weighed heavily on me. This is not something that I suddenly came to, uh, but, but even as early as May and June, districts were talking about what will September look like? Will it be virtual? Will it be hybrid? Will it be in person? Uh, so, I mean, it was a cause for concern for many months, and it wasn't until August 12th that districts were even given the option of considering uh, fully remote for everyone. So, um, what I've done tonight is I've recommended to the board that the board approve uh, a few different items. And so, those items are, are listed below. And uh, as you can see, a district calendar, uh, the district calendar for 2021 revised. Uh, the revisions are... Uh, four in-service days at the beginning of the year. Uh, this will allow staff members to be trained, have collaborative time, uh, have more planning time. And then what happens is the in-service days that were planned for later in the year, uh, one for November 3rd and one for June 18th, those have been removed. So there would be four in-service days for teachers right in the beginning. Uh, this would cause the start date for students uh, to, to move. So then the start date would be now Tuesday the 8th, which is right after Labor Day, that would be the first day of school for students. Uh, the plan that we're putting in place would have uh, students stay in a, in a fully virtual program up through November 4th, uh, Wednesday, November 4th. That's the last day of marking period one. And then as of Monday, November 9th, uh, we would start marking period two. And then that's when the hybrid plan would be set into motion. So. Uh, there's a calendar revision for that. There's also a letter regarding the reopening to the Department of Education. This letter was recommended by our board solicitor. Uh, and then also the reopening plan addendum with a format that was also recommended by our board solicitor. So I just, I want everyone to be aware that uh, there, there was definitely a very clear process and, and a lot of thought that went into putting this together over the course of one week 
And uh, there is still more work to be done, as you mentioned, Mr. Jenkins. The work that needs to be done is Lou Conti, Casey Noble, and I, uh, and other key team members need to be part of the planning process uh, when it comes to the specifics. That process will take approximately uh, two or three days. That's really all we have uh, because I want to get information out to the, to the family by Monday. And Mr. Conti and Mrs. Noble understand this. So it's, it's a pretty intensive schedule for us to make sure we have everything ready uh, to, to provide information by Monday. So anyway, that's a, that's a very long description for these three items. Uh, and a motion is requested to approve them. Thank you. I make a motion, Marissa. Uh, second, Lynn. Second, Lynn. Questions or comments? All right. The only comment I have is, Joe, you know, appreciate everything you're doing here. I know you and uh, Lou and uh, Casey are working your butts off trying to get this all straightened up. And hopefully, come the day, everything will be working correctly. I have a comment, Vera Dormo. Okay, go ahead, Vera. Um, I, my district where I work is also all virtual uh, until October 13th, so I'll be reporting back to you what happens. My, my real comment though is about the um, children with IEPs who don't, who, who have problems with remote learning. So I'm fully supportive of us going all virtual at the last meeting, I was raising concerns about the ventilation system. So I'm very much behind going all virtual. I'm hoping that we can go to hybrid as soon as possible because there is a certain group of students who, needs, who need that um, help from the teacher, but I also need to put health and safety first. So I just wanna make that comment because I do know there are a lot of parents out there in a lot of anguish because of their um, children and and virtual might not be the best for them really. So that is my comment. All right, thank you, Vera. Any other comments? I'll just say I agree with uh, Ms. Ms. Darmo's comments and, and what she said. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Caliguire opposed. Okay, we've had two opposed. Well, we've got enough, you know, to make it. Motion carries. Uh, do we have any reason to go into executive session? I need to know who opposed. Rose, Rose and who else? Uh, Rose and Vince were opposed. Okay, thank you. All right. No, no reason to go into executive session? Well, they need, then we need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second, Cam Jenkins. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm sorry, Vicki, I made that motion. Marissa made the motion. I'm sorry. Thank you. All right. Well, good night, everybody. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Thank, Thank you. Much. Good night.